Hello, everyone, and welcome to the last lecture. This is the last lecture for Chapter 19. Um, we're going to talk about healthcare-associated infections. These are also known as nosocomial infections. Um, healthcare-associated infections are, are infections that are acquired while you're at or in a healthcare setting receiving treatment for something else. Um, the treatment could be something um, like you're having surgery on your ACL, or you might be in the hospital because you have some type of an infectious illness already. Um, approximately 5 to 10% of patients admitted in the U.S. acquire some form of HAI. Um, oftentimes, this is uh, associated with the patient's normal flora. And so this is a chart that shows different types of HAIs. So the most common HAI that you can get is a urinary tract infection. Um, then you could have an infection at the surgical site, um, respiratory infect and tract infection. Um, you could get bacteria in your, so bacteremia, so your septic with bacteria or something else. What are the most common um, pathogens that cause infection? So these are the different bacteria that typically will cause some type of infection in healthcare associated infections, okay? So the reservoirs of infection in healthcare settings may differ from reservoirs that you normally see because we're not going to see um, sand or dirt. Um, we're not going to see rodents as a vector, or not a vector, as um, a reservoir of infection in a hospital, typically. Instead, it's going to be other patients. Um, it's going to be, um, and more patients in hospitals are going to be ill, so that's going to cause problems. Um, they're going to have different fomites. So where I talked about doorknobs, doorknobs might be a fomite, but you might have um, the toilet seat or you might have a sink that's a fomite for a certain bacterial infection uh, because the bacteria are so much more common in the hospitals because the individuals are sick. Um, you also might see certain bacteria that can grow in disinfectants. I've talked about Pseudomonas um, in the past, Pseudomonas actually grows in certain types of disinfectants, and so it is one of the most common causes of uh, UTIs and other infections at hospitals. Um, the workers at the hospital can actually carry disease. Um, you have individuals that come to work and they are ill with, I mean, it can be anything from just a small cold to a more severe illness. They come in, they're ill, they might be cooking or they might be cleaning um, rooms or doing laundry or they might be the nurses or the CNAs that are taking care of the patients. Um, all of these people can spread that disease though. And then, of course, like I said before, the patient's own microflora. So patients have their own um, microbial genome, and those microbes could actually cause disease if they get into the right area of the body. Um, so how is disease transmitted? Um, most often, you're going to have um, direct transmission or indirect transmission. Direct transmission could be from healthcare personnel going into the rooms, uh, changing dressings on a patient's wound, or maybe bringing in food, changing sheets, um, getting water. All of these things um, could actually cause patients to interact um, with this individual and they could directly transfer a disease. Um, an indirect transmission could be through medical devices, but it also could be through um, via fomite. So if someone brings in a um, container of water for their 
for the patient and that person has some type of an illness, they could transmit the illness to the water. Um, indirect transmission can also be airborne though. Um, so airborne transmission through coughing, sneezing, um, can leave droplets that um, the patient then breathes in. But we do have HEPA filters that do decrease airborne transmission of, of many diseases. And so um, since hospital-associated infections can be very problematic, um, this can cause patients to end up being in hospital for a longer period of time and increases their the amount of money they have to pay. Um, hospitals now have infection control committees that implement certain policies based on um, decreasing the number of HAIs that are occurring. And so um, they come up with guidelines and they follow these guidelines, things like um, washing your hands, um, wearing personal protective equipment, um, respiratory hygiene. They have um, patient placement and patient care equipment instructions. Um, so there's a lot of different things that these that hospitals do just to decrease the likelihood of a disease occurring. So where do they get a lot of these guidelines? Um, the CDC helps to establish the different um, healthcare infection control practices and guidelines. So they use um, guidelines that are produced by the CDC to make sure that they are um, following good protocol so that they're not spreading disease. And that is the end of chapter 19. Aren't you excited? Um, I'll stop this video and upload it to YouTube. You guys have a great day. Bye.